feeling of the play is nostalgic. It belongs to memory, which is softly lighted and not too realistic, and often has the quality of faint music. The scene opens on the interior of apartment F, third floor south on Maple Street in St. Louis, on a block which also contains an ever-ready garage, a Chinese laundry, and a bookie's shop disguised as a cigar store. It is early summer. There are billowing white lace curtains in the windows, and the furnishings in the little apartment contrive to have a certain grace and charm, in spite of their cheapness. The scene is played in two areas, stage right for the living room and stage left for the dining room. Portieres are between the two areas, which give the effect of a second proscenium, or a stage within a stage. That faint music, which is the music of memory, is heard as we start to play. Don't come into the kitchen with your white dress on. Go in front and relax until they get here. I was carrying Jonkles the very first afternoon that I met your father. However, it wouldn't be fair to blame that on the flowers. The Cotrera boy had driven me over to Clarksdale to see old Agnes Hoskins, who just had another stroke and couldn't talk. It depressed me so to see her in that condition. But on the way back, we passed this field of Jonkles, literally thousands of them. I made Dave stop the car, and I got out, and I gathered my two arms for him. Dave was annoyed because I wouldn't put them down the back seat of the car. I used him as a shield when he tried to kiss me. I didn't care to be kissed by Dave Cutreri. But when I got home and entered the downstairs hall, still carrying all those jonkles in my arms, well, there was your father, discovered for the first time, stolen a telephone at the foot of the stairs. Oh, how much better it would have been if I... Still, I wouldn't have had a daughter as pretty as you if I hadn't married that telephone man. Fell in love long distance. <laughs> Ham's a little uneven, hardly noticeable though. I'll leave it alone. Now I've got to mix the dressing for the salmon, change myself. It's already five of six. Why, Laura, you're almost as pretty as I used to be. <laughs> It's early for white, but white's so lovely on you. You're so slender, Laura. It's better to start out slender, for life does put flesh on you. I'm very lucky I can still wear misses. Turn around. Yes, it dips a little. The men don't notice such things. You've never looked so pretty. Maybe you'll never look so pretty again. So be on your best behavior. For once, come out of the shell. Vivacity counts for so much. I feel all gone inside. Laura. Why? You've made such a fuss, Mother, you don't even know him. He's Tom's best friend at the warehouse. And before I suggested Tom's bringing him home to dinner, I took a trip down there to have a look at him. I had Tom point him out. Oh, Lord. On the pretext of buying some bedroom slippers. I liked his appearance very, very much. Clean cut type of boy. Studies radio engineering at night school. Presses me as worth the investigation. You make it seem like we were set in a trap. Well, pretty girls are a trap. A pretty trap. Men expect them to be. I was amused when boys came bumbling around. I had no pangs of conscience when it seemed like one would have the trap sprung on him. I feel so ashamed of being pushed at strangers. But well, you wouldn't have to be pushed if you weren't such a shrinking, violent little girl. More old-fashioned than I am. I don't know how you do it. You're 18 and never been out with a boy. Never out with one, even. If you were an awkward, homely, stupid girl, that would be natural, Lord. But you're like a young green tree that's just beginning to flower. Is it so evil to have somebody look at you? You make it seem so important. That's why I'm nervous. Well, it might be important. You can never tell. Not only the practical member of this family, but the romantic one, too. What has romance got to do with this boy coming over? Nothing if you're nitwit. <laughs> Nothing if you're going to sit there with your teeth in your mouth, like you did the night I took you over to the Young People's League at the church, speaking to nobody so nobody spoke to you. Your sort of prettiness can't be dependent on law. It might go out as quickly as it came and leave you stranded in this little apartment. I put you in business school. I worked like a trooper to pay the tuition. What'd you do? 
kind of made you nervous, so you quit. I'm always being pushed into something, something I don't want. What do you want, then? To be left alone. I'd like to live by myself. Two courses are open to girls in your circumstances. Either they have a business career or they get married. And I've given up on you ever getting a job. Well, give up on getting me a husband. All right. Very well, then. I won't live forever to make provisions for you. You'll wind up one of those barely tolerated spinsters who live with their brother's families and eat the crust of humility all their lives. That's the future you've cut out for yourself when you take no advantage of anything that's done for you. I'm going to my room. I'm going to my room and I'm not coming to dinner. You can have the gentleman call her yourself. Oh, don't come out then. Stay in that little mouse trap of a room the rest of your days as far as I'm concerned. I'll make no effort if everything's resisted. I'll call no more old women out to buy home beautiful. I'll work in no more bargain basements either. I'll be just as neurotic as you, young lady. Stay and keep my nose in books all the time and let the world pass by. <coughs> oh, my heavens. I'm still in my apron. Laura, Tom's lost his door key and is ringing the bell. You'll have to let them in. I won't do it. Let them in yourself. I can't go to the door. Just look at me, will you? I can't either. You'll have to. Well, I won't. I absolutely won't. Laura Wingfield, I do not intend to answer that door, and that is fine. If you don't open the door and let your brother and Mr. Delaney in, the bell will go on ringing till doomsday, and I'll not budge an inch. You know me well enough to be quite certain I mean it. I've been crying. I don't care what you get, you will answer the door. Well, then get out of sight then if you don't want to be seen. I don't blame you, you really do look like a witch. <laughs> Is that so? Young lady, you serpent's tooth. I have you children to blame for a faded appearance, making myself a slave. Doing menial labor, cooking in a high school cafeteria, working in a dirty bargain basement, selling subscriptions to horrible magazines over the phone, and you throw at me such. If you want me to answer the door, you'll have to let go of my arm. I don't want you to do anything ever, believe me. I'll get the door, but I won't come to dinner. All right, all right, you need to break the door down. Did you forget your key again? I lost it. You'd lose your head if it wasn't fast enough. Laura, this is Jim. How do you do? Hello there. I didn't know Shakespeare had a sister. Excuse me? What was the matter? Uh, She's very shy. Oh, it's unusual to meet a shy girl. She looks a little like you, except she's pretty. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, this is a nice little place. Uh, well, it's home life. You look at the paper? Give me the comic section. Tom? Yes? Is that you and Mr. Delaney? No, Mother, it's Napoleon and Joan of Arc. <laughs> Ask the young man if he'd like to wash his hands. Would you? I took care of that at the warehouse. He says his hands aren't dirty, Mother. Well, dinner's nearly ready. I'll be right in. Don't break your neck. She has a nice voice. Southern. She's sort of a perennial Southern belle. <coughs> Hitler's bit off another hunk of Europe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, what's funny? It's Sadie Hawkins Day. Laura dear, I hope you're nearly ready. I'm putting things on. Somebody seems to be having a mighty good laugh in here. This is Mr. Delaney, I presume? Oh, don't get up. I've heard such a lot of wonderful things about you. Only you haven't got the comfortable chair. Tom, you're such a poor host, seat Mrs. Delaney in that straight chair. You sit over there on the sofa. Now, I'm not going to see Mister. I'm going to skip all formalities and call you... Uh, Jim! Jim! I've known so many nice Jims in days gone by. In fact, I've never known a Jim that wasn't a darling. So you must be one too. Now, tell me. Tell me all your hopes and dreams. Oh, don't be frightened. 
you. I know, I'm a rabbit trap. I have all the vivacity in this house. And I'm greedy for information, just, just greedy for it. So tell me everything, everything all at once. You work at the warehouse? Of course, I know you do. But what's your position there, the same as Tom's? Oh no, it's better than Tom's. Tom's told me that already. Uh, shipping, shipping? Clerk, yes, shipping clerk. Oh, that's nice, you handle shipping. Tom, go tell Miss Wingfield to put the rest of the dinner on the table. You've met Laura, my pretty little daughter? Uh, she let us in. Yes, you must excuse her for making a late appearance. We have no servant, and Laura prepared the dinner. <laughs> Thank heavens my daughter's more domestic than I ever was. I was a good young thing, as pretty as Laura. A little pretty, even, if you can believe that. <laughs> it's not hard to believe. Well, I was. And I married a handsome man. Remarkably good looking man. His picture's over there so you can see for yourself. Tom Winfield the first, that gallantly smiling gentleman by the Victoria. Oh. He certainly was good looking. No doubt about that. A girl can do no worse than put herself at the mercy of a handsome appearance. Character's what's to look for in a man. Sterling qualities, that's what counts in the world. Now, was I telling you? Oh yes, Tom Wingfield, the children's father. They hardly remember his face. He just disappeared. Walked off one morning, didn't come back that night. A few months later, I received a postcard from Hawthorne, California, saying on it, working on a squab ranch. Tell me, what is a squab ranch? Do you know? Well, I guess a place where they raise pigeons, something like that? The most improbable statement in the world went on to say, I'll send you some money as soon as I get paid. Mr. Delaney, the man was never paid. Ha, ha, ha. Must have never been paid. Ha, ha, ha. Five years later, another postcard came, this time from Mexico. Ha, ha, ha. The capital city of Mexico with a picture of parrots on it or something saying, Dear Amanda, hope you are well and happy. Much love. Tom. Ha, ha, ha. That's the last we ever heard of Tom Wingfield the first. So you can see Tom Wingfield the second has a lot to live up to. And let me tell you, I've had to scratch for existence. Don't let anyone ever tell you a woman deserted with children to raise has a bed of roses, a bed of briars I've lived in. What am I doing telling you all my earthly sorrows when there's so much it's pleasant to talk about? Tom, is Laura in the kitchen preparing the dinner? No, she isn't. <laughs> <laughs> you must excuse me, please. I guess Laura hasn't finished dressing. I must see. <laughs> she, 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 wants, Southern Bell. she sure can talk. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, wonderful. A woman like that? Huh. Would you like to live with her? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Why not? Well... Are you talking about me? Uh -huh. Am I the subject of discussion in there? Mr. Delaney, do you think I'm awful? Do you think I'm... Lord, dear, everything's ready. I'm not coming out. My children prepare me to... No, I won't say it. I won't tell you. You think they were cruel, and they don't mean to be cruel. It's just that I'm of a different generation, a different background. I still belong to the South, to Mississippi, where there was gentle living, gracious living, kindness. I know I ought to learn to be cold in the Northern way, but I much prefer to be the way that I am. My children will just have to put up with a silly old mother they see looks like a witch. Mr. Delaney, Jim, do I look like a witch? Oh, what? I... A witch! That's what they call me. I guess you wonder what I've done to deserve such castigation. Well, I'll tell you. I've pushed. I've driven. I've given myself no rest. I've sold subscriptions over the telephone. I worked as an artist model down at the Washington Art School, standing in cruel positions for hours of time. I've taken in sewing, 
I cooked at the high school cafeteria down on Newstead. I modeled for matron's dresses at Famous and Bar. I hired myself out as a practical nurse to horrible, invalid women who pinched and scratched me, made me ashamed to be human. I've done all those things, which was very bad of me, and so now I'm like a witch, and my children tell me that I am. And Dinner is served. <laughs> Jim, dinner is served. Jim, Jim, Jim. I'm going to take your arm into dinner, just as if the band was playing. This was a banquet hall. Let's imagine it is a banquet hall, all decorated with palms and level glass around the ivory walls and chandeliers all blazing to blind our eyes. <laughs> I made my debut in Vicksburg at such an affair. And in New Orleans, I was presented to society at the old St. Charles Hotel. I happened to have rich relatives in both cities who made things lovely, lovely. Cartwrights for the cotton kings of the South. That's all gone now. All changed. All formed to pieces. Here I am on Maple Street, St. Louis. Now, I'll relinquish your arm. You go sit over there at that side of our little table. Laura, dear! Tom, go sit at the head of the table. It isn't a pheasant. It's just a salmon. <laughs> it, it sure looks good, Mrs. Wingfield. Sure does smell good, too. Laura, we're waiting to say grace for you. Please hurry, dear. Her Laura's my chief cook and bottle washer. And what's Shakespeare? Shakespeare? Oh. You mean Tom? Why, Tom's my right hand bower. Only I'm sorry to hear you call him Shakespeare. I'm afraid that means he's been writing down at the warehouse. He's already lost five jobs for not devoting himself to his work. If he's going to lose this one, well, I just give up. Laura, we can't say grace until you come to the table. We won't say grace until you come to the table. Where is my place, please? Well, next to our gentleman Carla, the place of honor. Is there enough room for two on that side of the table? Well, it's such a tiny table, but we'll make room, don't worry. We'll just have to be chummy. And if our feet get tangled underneath the table, well, nobody's going to think anybody's flirting. Mother, <laughs> if you keep still, I'll say the grace. Excuse me. For these and all thy mercies, God's holy name be praised, through Christ our Lord, amen. Oh, how you race through it. Let's be seated all. I'm kind of hungry. How about you all? I can sure eat something. I've never met a man who could eat. Why, Laura, what pretty crystal beads you're wearing. Where did you get them, Laura? At the five and ten cent store. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Laura, I thought... Why, surely I thought some rich old man had given them to you. Neither of my children have any humor, in spite of the fact that I was always laughing as a girl. So much so that the Presbyterians down at Blue Mountain thought my soul was damned. <laughs> and their father? Well, excessive sobriety was never his characteristic. He had charm, I'll have to say that for him. One poor girl was certainly swept off her feet. Tom. Give Mr. Delaney that nice crisp piece off the end and put a little parsley on each plate. That isn't put there just for ornamentation. <laughs> My grandfather used to say, grass is only for cows when given lettuce. <laughs> Brilliant old gentleman. Ran for senator of Alabama, but drank. Laura, please sit up straight at the table. Don't hunch over like that. Both of you children, sit up straight at the table. Mother, please. Well, just look at Mr. Delaney and copy his posture. See how straight he is sitting. <laughs> I think it's a mark of character sitting up straight at the table. Mr. Delaney, Jim, I bet you've had some military training? Oh, I haven't yet, Mrs. Wingfield. But from what you see in the papers, it looks like I might get some pretty soon. Oh, don't talk about it. If there's a war and this country's drawn into it, I'll just die. Just die. Don't oh, make rash promises, Mother. <laughs> No, I mean it. If Tom had to go off to war? <laughs> I don't think Shakespeare would ever get in the army. No? Why not? Well, he's the dreamy type. It wouldn't be useful. 
the dreamy type. Tom, your reputation. And I still wanted my son to be known as a real live wire, the go-getter type. Not dreamy. I tell you, we could use a wide awake man in this establishment. Are you wide awake, Mr. Delaney? Me? I'm an old workhorse. You and I, the workhorses of the world. My children are dreamers. I know you are wide awake. I'll tell you a secret. I went down and looked at you. <laughs> Me? Where? At the warehouse. <laughs> I heard Tom speak of a nice young man at the warehouse, so when I was down to buy some bedroom slippers, I made him point you out. Oh my, how you work, work in. It did me good to see such application, but that's such a valuable thing, the way things are. You can't underestimate it. And Tom, so slow, so dreamy, not quite seeming to know where anything was while you were busy bustling around with such assurance. The way I look at it is... Do you look at it? There are three types in the world. Oh, three? What are they? One, the workhorses of the world. Oh. And they do what they're told to do. And at the end of each day, they're given some oats to feed on, enough to provide the energy for tomorrow. Hmm. Mr. Delaney, you surprise me a little. Yeah, what? I mean, a statement like that, so analyzing. But go on, what's number two? Well, type number two is the drivers, the managers of the workhorses and owners of them. They portion out the oats and, and lock up the stable door when the workday is over, open it in the morning. I've got that all figured out, but then there's type number three. Which type is that? The dreamy type. My children? Shakespeare, like him for instance, he doesn't fit into either classification. He can't work and he wouldn't drive. Can't work? Well, speaking figuratively. Oh. There's quite a number like him. Uh, won't drive and can't be driven. A monkey wrench in the works. Oh, how awful. But don't you see, Mrs. Wingfield? If the works aren't good, then a monkey wrench in them is. No, I don't see it all. I think it is awful to fit into such a worthless classification. So I'm a monkey wrench. Glad to know I've got a definition. <laughs> oh my heavens, a monkey wrench for a son. Mrs. Delaney, have some more potatoes. Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. What does your father do, Jim? He has a retail shoe store in Wyoming. Shoes, a commodity always in demand. And someday you'll take over, I suppose? My heart is set on radio engineering. I feel there's a great day coming for television. It will be a field where the dreamy types and the dissatisfied workhorses can flash to the world original pictures of things and make great changes. But won't these drivers that you speak of flash the pictures? Not if we muscle in first, the dreamers and I. Well, according to what you say, you're not the dreamy type, nor exactly the ordinary workhorse either. That's right, Mrs. Winfield. Well, just what are you then? A combination. The beginning of an experiment, uh, dreams plus action, which is the next generation. Oh, well that sounds exciting. It is, I think. All the world is waiting for a sunrise. Oh, oh, well, where was Moses when the lights went out? Do you know the answer to that one, Mr. Delaney? No. In the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank heavens we have these candles on the table. Oh, here's a match. Everybody just sit still. I'll take a look at the fuse box. Can you tell a burnt out fuse when you see one, Mr. Delaney? Uh-huh. Tom, did you pay that light bill? Well, I think so. I'm not sure. Oh, there we have it. There's no use even looking at the fuse box. The dreamy type neglected to pay the light bill. A Shakespeare probably wrote a poem on it. Oh, Mr. Delaney, this isn't a joking matter. There's such a high price for negligence in the world. Well, maybe the poem will win a $10 prize. We'll just have to have candlelight for the rest of the evening. Well, what's wrong about that? Nothing except I'm a little out of patience with type number three. Come on, dreamy type. You and I'll clear the dishes. Laura, you go take Mr. Delaney into the living room. Come on, Laura. Let's have a look at those records. I don't suppose you got any 
Benny Goodman are boogie woogie numbers. I, I'm afraid not. They're all old records. They came with the patrol. The machine's a pretty old timer. Yes. Father bought it the day before he left with all these old records. Ah, whispering. Dardanella? Where'd he go? He was type number three. Nobody knows. Oh, just disappeared? Yes. He left the music by way of apology for him when he fell in love with long distance. And Don't we haven't heard from him since. Don't you like swing music? It makes me think of the speed drills we used to have at Rubicam's business college. We typed to very fast music, which made me nervous. I had to quit after a while. Maybe so. Where shall I put the candles? On the floor. This is nice. This is very nice. I like it. I like this place. I like you people, Laura. You're... <laughs> You're out of the world. Are we? You're shy, aren't you? Don't be shy with me. Uh, I'm nothing to be shy of. What do you do? Do? Yes. I don't know. You went to business college and didn't like it, and now? I stay home, mostly. Here? Yes. What goes on? Why nothing? But something must. Why nothing? Really nothing. Huh. You're, you're very pretty. What? The dreamy type in a girl? Very attractive. What do you do? You keep asking me that, Matt. I don't know. I sketch in the park. I, I have my glass collection. A collection? Of glass? Yes. Little objects made out of glass, you know? Huh. I've never seen any. Of course you have. In windows. Little glass objects, huh? Animals, mostly. Little miniatures, then. Animals, mostly. <laughs> yes. I have hundreds of them, all around my bedroom, on little shelves, and all in very light and delicate colors. On sunny days, I live inside a rainbow. Let me see them. <clears throat> I could bring one out. Wait, I'll bring some out. I am 
right now, but most of the time, you wouldn't trust me with it? Most of the time, you'd hold it the same as I would. The record stopped. I better change it. Play Dardanella. That's my favorite record. Okay. Let's... let's dance. Oh, I wish that I knew how. I've never danced before. Would you? Like to try? Why, I... yes, I'd love to. Oh, you... you do it. <laughs> sure. I better do it. Your hair is pretty. Don't say pretty. That's more for a girl. Your hair is pretty. Oh, mine's so fine. There's nothing I can do with it but let it go. It's very nice of you. But I still think yours is. Shall we start dancing? Yes. How do I? Just uh, leave that all to me. Uh, don't tighten up. Just be relaxed and uh, let me move you around. Can you? Sure I can. Why, yes. Yes, you can. Just, just let yourself go. I'm stepping on you. Don't mind that. Don't you? I am not made of glass. I feel so funny. Is that why you're laughing? No, please. Let's stop for a minute. I, I'm out of breath. Please. <laughs> you're awfully pretty, little girl. What? <laughs> little, little girl made out of glass. When it's sunny, living in a rainbow. <laughs> Was that? Mother? Oh, gosh. I, uh, Mrs. Wingfield? Yes, Jim? Um, Laura and I would uh, like to go for a walk, if you don't mind. but the moon will make it lovely. Let's do that then. Why, that's a swell idea. Oh, yes, yes, your coat. And don't you think Laura needs a wrap? Uh, no, I no, think I, so. won't need, and I won't need any. Well, that light, thin dress, that summer dress she's wearing? No, I won't need any. Honest, Mother, I won't. She won't need any. Honest, Mrs. Wingfield. Let's go, Laura. All right, you children just run along. I'll leave the door open for you, but don't be later than midnight. <laughs> Where are they now? Gone for a walk. Yeah? That young man's already kissed her. Huh? <laughs> yes! I declare, you're a witch. <laughs> but I was a girl. Girls are a pretty trap. Always have been. Always will be, even when dreams plus action take over the world. Now, now, dreamy time, let's go finish the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> 